Hello and welcome to Live and Local here on QCTV. This is the Andover edition and uh, we are here at the Andover Public Works Vehicle uh, Maintenance building here in uh, in Andover, a, a fairly new building, and we have a great show for you today. We have got three city staffers that will be here. We'll talk about recycling. We're going to talk about uh, what's happening at the Andover Community Center, and we're also going to learn about uh, the uh, the building itself and, and what goes into some of the snow removal and what's coming up for you as we hit into the winter weather. We're also going to have a chance to talk with Don Nugent, who's the uh, the communications coordinator at the at Granny's Closet, which is an outstanding volunteer and service program here locally. So all coming up next on Andover's edition of Live and Local here on QCTV. Thanks again for joining us here on QCTV's Live and Local. It's the Andover edition, and we are here at the City Works Vehicle Maintenance Building here in Andover. Uh, and uh, I am fortunate to be joined by Jason Baumunk, who is uh, uh, the guy who's in charge of everything here. Jason, welcome to the show. We really appreciate you being part of uh, Live and Local uh, today. Thanks for letting us use the building. And uh, uh, you know, you see behind us, we've got some of the vehicles that are part of this. And uh, first of all, introduce yourself. Tell me what uh, tell me what you do and how you got here. Yeah, thank you uh, for having me today. Uh, so I'm Jason Baumuck. I'm the Parks and Streets Operations Manager uh, here at the City of Andover. And uh, I kind of have an interesting role because I get to be a part of so many different things. Uh, Parks Department, we take care, uh, we maintain almost 70 parks, 33 miles of trails, a uh, bunch of outdoor ice rinks, athletic, uh, athletic facilities. Um, Street-wise, it's a lot of maintenance projects, a lot of uh, planning future uh, you know, reconstruction projects, things like that. Uh, and then on top of all that, uh, I get to be a part of the Park Commission and, and help uh, um, kind of help uh, guide the decisions and, and get information to the Park Commission for uh, futures of our parks and additions and changes and then uh, get to manage the snow plowing which is coming up soon so. yeah, well, I'm sure we're all really excited yeah. about the snow oh, yeah. and snow plowing uh, uh, first of all the you know you were in a building that's about three years old mm -hmm. and uh, um, beautiful building it, you 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 moved from basically mm -hmm. a closet uh, to, to a new building mm -hmm. You maintain a bunch of different vehicles, mm -hmm. and, and it, it, the building really allows the city of Andover to save some money, but also really uh, grow the, the, the life of some of the product, mm -hmm. the uh, um, equipment mm -hmm. you use. Tell us a little bit about what you do here. Yeah, so this is uh, um, staffed by our vehicle maintenance department. Uh, it's a, a three-person staff uh, that, that maintain uh, about 350 motorized pieces of equipment. Uh, about 70 of those are our vehicles, you know, like the snowplow behind us. Uh, different fleet vehicles, uh, our day-to-day -day, um, building department, engineering department vehicles. Um, so yeah, they're they're a very um, efficient staff. You know, they, they do a lot with uh, what they do, and this building really makes that um, really benefits them because they, they were working out of a very small garage before this, so they, they couldn't just start a project and then work on it and leave it and come back to it when parts came in. They had to get it in, get it out of the the shop right away and uh, this they can they can work on multiple things at a time it's really helped the efficiency so uh, it's been a great addition that's great and, and you you uh, um, had we were talking earlier and you talked about the fact that uh, you've been able to extend the life of some of the uh, snow plows and some of the other equipment uh, years and mm -hmm. and really uh, absolutely keep uh, the city uh, still mm -hmm. with plows and and, mm -hmm. and lawnmowers and everything mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of it has to do obviously with the building but more importantly mm -hmm. with you and your staff and that's really appreciated yeah it's definitely a testament to the staff uh, you know we do keep vehicles longer than than most cities um, just we, we have a, a lot to take care of um, the city of andover is a pretty large uh, city to try to plow and maintain and takes a lot of vehicles and so those vehicles we we hang on to them 15 20 uh, 22 23 years sometimes so yeah. uh, the it's really a testament to the vehicle maintenance staff here and and the job they do to keep them on the road yeah well good um we mentioned snow uh mm -hmm. it's november mm -hmm. we're past thanksgiving mm -hmm. and almost into december mm -hmm. uh, have had very little so far mm -hmm. so you you guys have been uh, uh kind of at the waiting mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. some snow last year 
huge, huge mm -hmm. year of snow. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about the snow plowing efforts that you guys mm -hmm. go through and, and some of the rules mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff that would make, mm -hmm. e uh, make it easier for you guys to, to plow and, and make uh, the, seat, uh, the streets a little safer. Yeah, so snow plowing operations here, uh, it's really a joint effort. Um, so all of the public works staff basically has a plow route uh, besides one of the vehicle maintenance staff stays here in the shop. So uh, 22 plow routes, uh, we have two people out plowing trails and then we have a, a person in the shop here. Uh, so it's really a large undertaking to try to get it all done. And it really takes everybody we have. We don't have anybody extra just waiting to jump into a route. I mean, every, everyone's really committed to being here and, and taking it on. So uh, some of the things we, we see out there though is, you know, cars will, will creep up behind plows because they back up frequently. Uh, to get around an intersection, a lot of times they'll plow through it, back up, and then make the corner. Uh, we'll see cars, you know, get a little too close, and uh, visibility in a plow truck is, is difficult. It's, it's a large piece of equipment, a lot of blind spots, and then a lot of the mirrors and, and cameras get covered with snow. So it's really a, uh, it puts the drivers and it puts the public in danger uh, when they get up too close. So really want to give the plow space to work. Um, some of the other things we would really like to see is, is people keeping their garbage cans up in their driveways. Uh, I know the drivers don't go out there and intentionally try to knock garbage cans over, but um, being out in the street, it's hard to get around them and have that windrow of snow and the weight of the snow hits the can and tips it over. So if, uh, that's one thing we really, the drivers really ask is if uh, we could keep the garbage cans in the driveways. Garbage trucks have a long iron on them. They can reach up their ways, so. Okay. Um, well, good. The, um, one of the things that comes up all the time is is winter parking mm -hmm. and and how that uh, affects let's say that we've got a we we the forecast says we've got you know six to eight inches coming in what what can we do to make it easier for you yeah so the the winter parking rules are uh, november 1st uh, april 15th there's no parking on the city streets overnight so uh, 1 p.m to 6 a.m there's no parking on any street uh, that also applies when there's a snow there's no parking any time until the snow has been plowed uh, it really creates a, a safety hazard when uh, we have a heavy, wet snow and we have to plow around a parked car and then the, um, the car moves and now you, you've, you have an icy berm in the middle of the street for others to possibly hit. So, uh, it, you know, it's, it's an inconvenience to the plow driver, it's an inconvenience to all the neighbors who now have to go around this pile of snow in the street, but it also creates a safety hazard. So, and we really do ask that you, you stay parked in the driveway till we're done plowing. Uh, a lot of times plows make two passes down a street. So they'll make the first pass and then people will back out in the street to plow the driveway. And now we we've, we've have to go by again and now we've created a parking issue. So, um, and, and the No County Sheriff's Office does enforce parking rules. Uh, our drivers do have warning tags we leave on cars just to give them kind of a courtesy warning. Um, but multiple offenses, usually in Oka County will be out there and tagging cars, so. Well, it's also important just mm -hmm. for the safety of the driver, safety of the, the equipment, mm -hmm. uh, and safety for, for, for uh, the uh, residents as well mm -hmm. to make sure that mm -hmm. they're following the parking. Oh, for sure. The, um, now, speaking of winter, let's, mm -hmm. let's get away from the heavy snow <laughs> and, and, and the, the mm -hmm. early mornings that mm -hmm. you guys have to go through. Let's talk a little bit about um, the state of hockey, mm -hmm. and this is the city of hockey and the state of hockey. We've got a lot of different ice rinks that, that you mm -hmm. guys maintain and that mm -hmm. uh, warming houses that, that mm -hmm. are available. Tell us a little bit about how mm -hmm. you, when that uh, efforts start to flood uh, mm -hmm. and when they're open and how mm -hmm. kind of the operation around that. Yeah, so on a normal year, we would, we would have started flooding by now. Uh, obviously, with this weather, it's been cool the last couple of days, but daytime temps are going to be back up in the 40s here soon. So uh, the way we go about it is, is we split up the parks department into two shifts. So we have an overnight shift that comes in, and they, they'll take a couple water tankers out, start flooding the rinks, um, do that overnight. And then if weather's good, the daytime guys can do the same thing. So the, it's really the ice is built overnight by the parks crew. And, uh, most of the parks guys play hockey themselves, and so they're really dedicated to these ice rinks. And, um, but yeah, it's a, it, uh, this year we're hoping uh, in two weeks to start flooding. You know, okay. we'll, we'll keep evaluating, but um, yeah, it's definitely later than we'd like to see it. We'd like to have all the rinks open and operating by Christmas break for sure. So. Okay. And then, uh, of course, you've got some uh, uh, rink attendance that you need as well. How can they apply? Yep, so if they go to the City of Andover website, uh, there should be a link for employment. Um, we do uh, staff uh, four warming houses for the winter. Uh, we do have some help with the Youth Hockey Association at one of them, but uh, uh, we, we still could use uh, staff for that. Okay. So if anyone's interested or has some, some free time, we have a lot of retired people that, that seem to, it's an enjoyable job for them. Um, 
very part-time job. So yeah. I encourage you to reach out to the city and or website to find that. Great. And finally, um, you've got a, a tree lighting ceremony coming up. Uh, tell us a little bit about that with, with like a minute left. Yep. So we uh, kind of a last minute push on this. We, we've talked about it a little bit and decided this is the year we're, we're going to kick it off. Um, so it's uh, December 8th, a week from Friday. It's going to be from 5 to 8 o'clock uh, at the west side of the community center. Uh, the Andover Lions and some community volunteers and some city staff are, are going to be doing hot chocolates. We have some bonfires out there. Uh, do a, a first year kind of kickoff event with the hopes of turning this into a very large event. So uh, next Friday night, uh, December 8th uh, at 5 to 8. Oh, so. Well, great. At, at the, uh, on the west side of the Andover yep. uh, Community Center. Jason, thanks so much for joining oh, us today. We really appreciate it. And yep. Thanks for everything you do for Andover. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> So after these guys get done plowing, they head over to the White Rabbit for lunch, White Rabbit Kitchen, and uh, they have started as a food truck. They moved into one location, and then they moved south about three doors. And we've got uh, a package now of what the new location looks like. From starting a business during the pandemic, a food truck, a brick and mortar, and if you haven't heard, now the expanded home for White Rabbit Kitchen. I mean, a couple weeks in and it's been pretty great. Yep. We've been really lucky. Absolutely. So. The husband and wife owners, Rob and Tammy, are Andover residents themselves and are happy to stay close to home. It sort of dawned on me after our opening weekend that we've really become kind of a neighborhood destination restaurant that people are kind of proud to have in their communities. It's been really cool, kind of something you don't really think about when you're building it, and then all of a sudden you're there and you take a step back and you're like, wow, all the positive and fun feedback and the smiles on everybody's faces, like when they're dining here and they're so excited when they walk in the door, and Tammy did such a wonderful job with the, creating a cool atmosphere and vibe in the front of the house that, I mean, people are just, can't stop complimenting us when they come in. So that's really been a great feeling. With a bigger space, a drive through window, some old favorites, and new shareable foods to try, and seating at the bar area, you can hang out for quite a while. We're trying to create a unique experience, something a little different, you know, an up, a lot of fresh made foods, ingredients, everything scratch made, and then I personally enjoy good wine. I study wine. And so I wanted to offer an expanded wine list for people to have somewhere where they can try new things. And, um, and then with the cocktails, I think, you know, we've tried to come up with things that people can call it a go-to or maybe try something different. Um, we're also gonna have mocktails for people that choose to have something fun without the alcohol. So I guess we just want to offer things that are fun and different for people to try. Once spring comes along, their patio space is the perfect place to enjoy the nicer weather. They have also partnered with Minnesota breweries and Andover farmers to keep things local. Also, we're gonna continue to do our holiday um, meals. So, um, where we do a pre-order pre menu um, where customers can come and pick it up, whether it's before Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, we do a Super Bowl one. So those are, those are really fun for people because, I mean, not everybody likes to cook, right? I mean, that's what keeps us in business. Um, and so we like to do those kind of things because, once again, that's a lot of times outside of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's fun for me and the kitchen staff to get to make some foods that we don't make every day. They will continue to do the food truck, catering for grab parties, weddings, and corporate events. So keep White Rabbit Kitchen in mind for your next meal. Come on in, give it a try. <laughs> yeah, I'd say um, we're very excited to be here in Andover and open up this wonderful new space. and. Uh, lay out a whole new expanded menu for everybody so we'd love to have you come out give us a try and stop and say hi
Hi, I'm Jason Baumuck and I'm the Parks and Streets Operations Manager here at the City of Andover. Uh, the City of Andover is a growing community and the park and recreation play a vital role in the residents' quality of life and well-being. Resident volunteers serving on the Park and Recreation Commission have been an invaluable asset in growing our park system to over 67 uh, city parks with 32 miles of trail connecting them all together. Most recently, the Commission has been responding to uh, residential development within the city by planning for neighborhood parks and advising the City Council on re other related topics such as park improvements and recreation. The Commission also promotes recreational programming within Andover's parks by working with uh, the Youth Athletic Associations to provide excellent facilities for games, practices and tournaments, and events such as hosting movies in the park. If you are interested in serving on the Park and Recreation Commission, please fill out an advisory commission application form available on the City of Andover website. Applicants should have an interest in public policies, a willingness to learn, and good problem solving and communication skills. Meetings are held the first and third Thursdays of every month at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers here at Andover City Hall. So feel free to stop into a Park and Recreation meeting to see what it's all about. Welcome back to Andover, or QCTV's Live and Local, the Andover edition. We are joined by Don Nugent, who is the uh, communications coordinator for uh, Granny's Closet here in Anoka County. Don, welcome. Thanks for being part of uh, the uh, QCTV's Live and Local. And uh, we're here to learn about a little bit more about uh, the uh, Granny's Closet. So tell us a little bit about, um, uh, you know, for those who don't know anything about it. What is Granny's Closet and who do you serve? Granny's Closet is a local nonprofit that serves adults with disabilities and seniors in Anoka and Sherburne counties. And we do that by providing them with daily care items, cleaning products, clothing, mm -hmm. household items, that sort of thing. Now I was there yesterday and I had a chance to uh, um, uh, kind of look at the operation that you guys have unbelievably great operation and un un unreal organization it, it, and that uh, um, unknown to me honestly and I feel very bad that I don't know about it but it's, it's a great opportunity to to get involved and I've, I've got some stuff that I want to get over to you uh, donation wise but tell us how did you get involved with this so <clears throat> it's kind of a long story but long, it, I got involved through my work um, one of the board members was a spouse of a co-worker and she requested that I put up a flyer for the, our angel program, which is our Christmas program, and I posted it and I decided to become an angel for the seniors and adults with disabilities. And um, I did that for a couple of years and then I decided I wanted to be more involved in the program and I became a board member. Oh, that, great. So. Um the uh, and we're going to talk about the angel program yes. in just a moment. Moment, but uh, you, there's a few program, other programs that are available. Good night, uh, good nights for grannies. What is that? So, good nights from grannies is a program where we provide beds for seniors and adults with disabilities in need. Um, the their county social worker, county case manager, or county their their county contact makes requests to us, and we purchase a bed for them, and it gets delivered to them. Okay, uh, the um, uh, angel program you had mentioned it, it, last night when I was there, they had a couple of uh, people brought in some presents. Mm -hmm. uh, a very, very big program with uh, over a thousand people part, uh, being part of this. Walk us through how what what the program is and how someone could get involved with this. So the angel program is our annual program. We purchase we match up angels with individuals that have made a wish list. The wish list come from the county caseworkers or case managers, um, and they fill out the forms with their individuals, and then they submit them to us, and then we do a match. We have like a couple of days where we, we match up the individuals with angels, and then the angels go out, purchase the items that are not, you don't, they don't have to purchase all the items, um, and we do say 25 to $50 limit um, on gifts that are purchased, and they wrap those items, and then they bring them to um, the warehouse on this year, it's Monday and Tuesday next week. And then the following day, we um, have the social workers and case managers come and pick up the items and then they distribute them to their individuals. 
Uh, great story last night from, I, I believe it was Teresa that okay. had mentioned how excited one, uh, how excited these recipients are. Oh, uh, yes. she, she mentioned the fact that uh, the first year that one of the recipients got it, she waited until Christmas. And, and in the day of Christmas, she got up and, and had a chance to open it and was, was just thrilled with what she, she got. The next year when, when the volunteer brought it over or the caseworker brought it over, uh, she actually said, as soon as they left, I opened it up immediately. And, and it, so this really means a lot to people. Yeah, a lot of times this is the only gift that they get at the holiday season. Yeah, and that's uh, uh, just, uh, it's a great program. Once again, you can find out about that on the website. Yes, yes. If you go to our website, um, grannyscloset.org, you can find all up about all of our programs that we have. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing that was extremely uh, impressive is this is 100% volunteer. Yes. Uh, how does somebody find out how they can volunteer? So if, if you just want to shoot us an email or um, submit a form through our contact site on our webpage and just say what you're interested in, we have um, volunteers that can work in the warehouse. We have um, Tuesdays from 5.30 to 7 or Fridays 10 a.m. until noon. Um, you can be a board member. We have a couple of board member positions open, just members at large. Um, you can donate. As we accept donations on Tuesdays and Fridays. You can be a part of one of our, our you know, specific programs and help out with that. Uh, and donations not only for for clothing and medical supplies. I think those are, you know, those are a couple of the big things that they're looking for in medical supplies, such as, uh, you know, uh, walkers, I believe, and um, uh, like shower chairs, that kind of. Yeah. Well, right now we're we're we put kind of a hold on accepting clothing because we recently made a move, and so we're trying to get that all organized, what we have. So we're putting a hold on the clothing, but. Our biggest need is cleaning supplies right now. Cleaning supplies, personal care items. So anything from laundry soap, dish soap, conditioner, shampoo, face wash, just general stuff. Um, those are our biggest needs is actually the cleaning supplies are our biggest need. Okay, right so now. some of the cleaning supplies, uh, it, it would be almost, um, uh, helpful if they if a cash donation or money donation was made and you guys would purchase those yes is that correct? yes yes okay yes well good uh you know um some of the the volunteers that are there uh, you know obviously you know i saw a volunteer board there it, and i know that you guys had just moved into your new location yes. um first off where the new location where is it and and how do we get there okay so the new location is very very close to our old location it's just one building south Mm -hmm. And instead of getting to the stoplight to, to start the one way, you're going to take your very first left off of fourth okay. when, you go, when you start to come into the, the cottages. Okay. And then you've got a, you've got a uh, uh, sandwich board out there. I think it was a sandwich yes. board out yep. there. It says Granny's Closet. Yes. And, and then so to come on in. Uh, so right now, just to kind of recap, we've got the, the, um, the angel program uh, that is happening. And to get you, they can be involved. And it's this next week, I think, isn't it? Yes. Yep, Monday, yep. Tuesday, so Wednesday. we have all of our um, angels and individuals matched up. So okay. there's, we don't have any more room for purchasing okay. presents, which is an awesome that, thing. That is a, 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 so a good awesome. problem to have. Yes. yes. So. Um, so that portion is done. But if you know, if you wanted to volunteer in some other way w w for the angel program or for any, in any aspect, just reach out. Okay. And we will love, we would love to have your help. Right. So we have, we all have a, a, a a lot we all have elderly parents or we most of us have elderly parents uh that are going to be moving into not only into uh, you know from a house to to maybe a you know a, a service facility um or a full service facility uh this is a great time for to instead of goodwill um or some of those we can drop some of those those um, close off once you get organized yes, in your yes, new building yes. uh and and you can use them for yes for, for yeah, some of your caseworkers, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. We love we love any donation that we get. Okay. Yes, but yes, we and we do accept medical equipment, um, especially walkers with the seats. Yeah. That is always a big hit. They go fast. 
Yeah, and there's plenty of them. I mean, there's, yes. there there are there are some out there that that, that you know, like you said, the seats are, are always important because yes. they can carry stuff around with them yes. as well. So, uh, Don, funniest part of working at Granny's Closet? I the <laughs> the funnest part of working at Granny's is just knowing that I have made somebody's life a little bit easier. Just you know, taking one burden away from them <laughs> oh, you know okay, yeah. yeah you know what i mean yeah. like oh i don't need to worry about buying this because i can get it mm -hmm. from granny's and then just seeing the excitement because sometimes we do get to meet the people that we gift the items to um they will occasionally come in and say thank you and they are just so happy and joyful that's yeah. so awesome yeah well, what a great uh, honestly uh, my visit there yesterday was just incredible. I completely love the program and love the organization. And thank you for doing this. And thanks for being part of, yes. uh, of Granny's Closet. And thanks for being part of to, uh, the Live and Local today on Andover. My pleasure. Edition. So great. So coming up next, we have got um, a, a chance to learn about Muddy Paws Dog Care. Uh, Muddy Paws is located on, on 161st. And I take my dog there myself, not only for uh, grooming, but also to, to board her at times, and she loves it. It's awesome. And uh, we're gonna see a little bit, learn a little bit more about Muddy Paws right now. My name is Jess. Um, I own Muddy Paws Doggy Daycare here in Andover. So we do overnight boarding and um, daycare, and then we also do some light grooming, just baths, nail trims, that kind of stuff. Um, all of the dogs that board with us get to spend their entire day in daycare. They're not kenneled throughout the day. Um, we give breaks and naps and stuff as needed, but for the most part, everybody hangs out in our play area all day long. And then we also, with our daycare program, um, owners can drop their dogs off and pick them up um, later in the day. You know, if they are working or have a busy day or, you know, whatever's going on, they just need a break from their dog if they're working from home, which happens sometimes. So yeah, so we just, they, they hang out, they play. We have a large indoor area, large outdoor area. They're supervised 100% of the time while they're in play playtime. Um, and they just get a lot of exercise and socialization and yeah. I think one of my favorite part about the dogs is when we have a dog that comes in that at first is kind of shy and reserved and not sure of herself or himself. And then, you know, after a short time or a couple, days of daycare they come out of their shell and they find a friend and they just like it, it they just become this super happy you know they're t they come in and their tails wagging versus being a little nervous so that's definitely my favorite part is just I get really excited when when they when they make that 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 leap into playing and making friends and things like that I live in Andover um, I have four daughters and they all attend Andover schools um, and so when I was looking to add a second location I really, really wanted to, to go to stick with Andover. Um, it's a growing community. Um, you know, there's tons and tons of kids and families, and usually with kids and families comes dogs. Um, you know, you, you drive anywhere or walk anywhere, there's always people out walking their dogs. And I just felt like it was just something that the Andover community needed. I have an absolutely amazing staff. I work really hard to find um, people that share the same passion with the dogs as I do. And they just, they truly do an amazing job. And I can assure you that they take very, very good care of each and every dog that is here because they do feel so, so warmly about all of the dogs that are, do come in. It's just a really great community um, full of lots of great people. And I love being able to, you know, go to the gym or go to a, an event or a sporting event or just even Walmart, Target, you know, restaurants. And I see people who I take care of their dogs. So it's just so much fun to have that link to where we live, plus having a business here. Um, it just makes it, pulls it all together. And I mean, I'm constantly like meeting people that I know and then they, they bring their dog here and they're like, oh my gosh, you own this place? It's like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's just a fun connection between the community I live in and um, you know, families and their pets and things like that. Hi there, I'm Cameron Kaitonen, City of Andover Natural Resources Technician. I'm here to talk about the Nature Preserve Commission, formerly known as the Open Space Advisory Commission, which is an advisory board to the City Council. This group is primarily tasked with management and maintenance decisions of the four nature preserves in the City of Andover. This group was originally formed in 2006 to help 
decide what properties to purchase after the approved $2 million bond referendum that same year. After that referendum went through, the group helped to decide on four preserves that were purchased. The group is also tasked with looking at potential funding options for potentially buying new land in the city. The group generally meets quarterly on the second Wednesday of the month at around 6 p.m. So in beginning in November, December, we will be looking for uh, new members to the group. There will be information in the no November, December edition of the city newsletter, which will outline the application uh, process uh, and instructions for if you are interested in applying. So if you are interested in the outdoors, interested in being a part of the community and being uh, working as, along with the city of Andover, and also would like to meet new people, this might be a great opportunity for you. Welcome back again to Andover's uh, edition of Live and Local here on QCTV. Uh, I have the uh, pleasure to have uh, Sarah Morgan, the uh, Andover Recycling um, Recycling Coordinator here. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you. for being part of it today. Uh, first of all, uh, you have been part of the Andover Recycling uh, Program for seven years, is that correct? Yes. And uh, um, how did you get involved with this? Uh, the opportunity to be the Recycling Coordinator, um, the job opened up and I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring. And, and, they, and, and they took it immediately. That's, yes. That, that, that's great. So one, one of the great parts about Andover is the, the recycling center that's over there. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later. It's very close to, the, to where we're at right now, you know, a stone's throw away. So, uh, but let's talk a little bit about, we've, kind of the theme of the show right now has been Christmas time and, and we've got a holiday season coming up right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have, are putting up decorations, they're opening up new lights, all the, that stuff. The trees are coming, wreaths. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about what we're doing with some of the boxes. So um, during the holiday season, we put out more cardboard containers because we get such an excess mm -hmm. of cardboard. Um, so we have about 14 to 16 and they're emptied during December, you know, several times a week. Okay. And so we just ask that residents flatten the boxes as much as possible and to remove any sort of styrofoam or packing material out of there okay. that's not recyclable okay and, and and so break it down make sure that like the 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 film that's on to to, to see it you take that off and yep. and so it's just cardboard going in there right yes uh while we're talking about that uh you, i think the one thing we, we had talked about previously was uh when in doubt throw it out right throw it in the garbage instead of in the recycling correct that's correct what, what's the reasoning why i mean what uh, uh, talk a little bit about how what the efforts are if something gets thrown in there that isn't necessarily uh, recyclable. So our staff spends quite a bit of time cleaning out the recycling containers when people have thrown in items that are not recyclable. Okay, well that's, uh, so yeah, great. And, and it also, I think you mentioned that the bat, the, whatever is in there, if, if it gets to the recycling facility, it, mm -hmm. it ends up being a bad batch and they have to throw the whole thing out, correct? Yep, if there's too much contamination in the recycling container, then they just end up putting it in the landfill. Good. Holiday lights, big thing right now. You've got a tree lighting coming up on December 8th for, mm -hmm. for Andover, which will be a lot of fun. It's at, at the Andover Community Center. Um, however, we, you know, every year weather breaks lights, uh, you know, the weather or, or uh, somebody, st you know, the tree falls over, cat gets at it, what, whatever. What do we do with broken lights and, and some of the strings? So you can recycle them through special lights recycling programs. We have one at Andover City Hall. Okay. Um, you bring in your broken light strings and then we in turn bring them to a scrap metal facility that uh, recycles them at their facility. So not here at the Andover, uh, the, the recycling center. No, nope. it's, it's it's at the at, it's at the city at City Hall. Right? Yep, it's at Andover City Hall, and we collect them all year round. Okay, good to know on that. So uh, when we have Christmas in July, we can bring those lights over. Yeah, that's good. To <laughs> always fun to watch kids open presents and everyone open presents. Uh, wrapping paper, uh, I didn't realize this, it, some of it can be recycled. Some of it can be. The ones that can't be recycled have, you know, too much ink in it. If there's glitter or anything shiny on it, that unfortunately is just garbage. Okay. It has to be more of like a paper 
consistency. A paper consistency. Mm -hmm. And um, on the website, is there anything that uh, can help dis distinguish between the two, or is there is there a place where we can find out what 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 you do take and what what isn't? Yeah. Or? Yep. You can go to the Andover website, or you can check out Anoka County Recycling and Resource Solutions, and they have a lot of great information on that as well. That's good to know. Uh, of course, once we get rid of wrapping paper after after a couple of days, it's probably time to get rid of the trees, some mm -hmm. wreaths and stuff like that. What do we do with uh, with uh, the real trees and the real reefs once uh, once uh, Christmas is on or the holidays are done and, and they're dead and time to go? Uh, you can bring them to the Anoka County compost site, um, or you can also ask your garbage hauler to pick it up at the curb. A lot of garbage haulers offer that service as well. Okay, so, so check with your hauler first, and then if not, you can bring it over to the Anoka County yep. Compost State. Um, the, uh, uh, we mentioned that you can go to the website and kind of find out uh, um, more about the holiday recycling, which is always you know, an important part. Uh, it, it, your, your garbage cans are filled up anyway, great opportunity to help recycle and, and, and have some green initiatives that are, that are part of you know, not necessarily filling up landfills, which I think is, is excellent. Every month, Andover also has some, uh, you know, recycling, um, you know, recycling event that, that happen. And I think twice a year, you've got a couple of other ones that come up. Can you tell us a little, remind us a little bit about what the recycling uh, cycle is monthly and, and, and yearly? Yeah, so every second Saturday of the month, we have uh, recyclers come out to the recycle center and they recycle appliances and electronics and mattresses and box springs. And at the same time, we have a paper shredding company come out with a paper shredding truck, and they offer that as a free service to Anoka County residents. And if you haven't seen the the, the uh, shredding truck, it is awesome. It mm -hmm. just lifts it up. It's 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 really cool. But more importantly, you you have safe. Uh, uh, destruction of your documents, which uh, uh, is always important, especially with, you know, everything that's going on with, uh, you know, uh, identity theft. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity for you to get to bring over there and, and have them do it yourself. And the and the, there there are costs for some of these items, and they're on the website, especially yep. for mat mattresses and some of the other things out there. Correct. Yep, there are charges for appliances and electronics and mattresses and box springs. But it's a whole lot less than than it, what. What, what it would be normally, right? Yes, and it's a lot less than what your garbage hauler would probably charge you. So uh, as, we, as, we get to, uh, as we get through the year with, with, with some of the recycling, um, you know, there are some other green initiatives that kind of come up every once in a while. Anything that you're working on or anything you'd like to add that uh, is out there? Nope? Okay. Well, Sarah, hey, I absolutely appreciate you uh, joining us today. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for what you do for Andover, the city of Andover and, and the residents. We absolutely appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you got it. Coming up next is, uh, is a chance uh, for us to uh, get ready for ice fishing season as uh, the ice is starting to freeze out there. It's been cold. We need some snow. Uh, but really, Minnesota's winter weather is always, uh, 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 winter sports are always a lot of fun to be part of. And coming up next, let's check out what you can do to help modify and uh, uh, improve your ice house with Castle Wench. Right in the heart of Andover are the Fish House Aftermarket Specialists. Castle Winch is a small family owned business that is passionate about ice fishing and the Minnesota fishing culture. It's been great. I mean, as, as far as the, you know, the, the, the ice house world, I mean, Minnesota is the hub for that. Um, we do sell product across the country. We ship stuff all over the country, but, but the hub of it right here, all the, all the, the shows in the area work out well, all the, the, the Facebook group get togethers that happen on the ice. All those things um, um, just work out well. It's a great location. We had a chance to speak with the owner of Castle Winch, Matt Pruby, to learn more about his business and the products that they offer. I have a, a passion for ice fishing. I'm an engineer by trade, and it just kind of worked its way into developing products to assist in, in ice fishing. You know, it's all the things that kind of bother you. You want to make it easier. You want to you want to make improve on things, and it's all those ideas that come from just spending time out there ice fishing yourself and coming up with these ideas and bringing them into reality. Our electric bed lifts, um, are kind of our, our secret to the trade there is that as we, we build them to fit the application. 
Um, you can bring us any unit and we'll build custom build something to fit it. So we can put them in anything, ice houses, campers, trailers, tiny homes, van builds. Um, it's a very universal product. So we, we, we do sell a lot of those and every single one is custom built. And that process kind of starts, it's not something you just go on our website and click order one and check out. It kind of starts with us figuring out what house you have and then we'll need to get some measurements from you. Um, it's a really simple process, but just really getting a hold of us to start with, telling us what you have, what you want to do is the right way to do that. And then we'll work our way through it, get, get the right information from you, custom design it, custom build it, and then it's ready to go. Our lift systems, it's a, it's a retrofit that we do. It's a conversion um, on, your, on your standard crank up house to, to convert it to electric lift. So you're gonna press a button to lift it. It's a, it's a fairly involved process where we, where we takes a couple weeks to work on your house. And, and we've done a lot of them. We, we know what we're doing. And, uh, and we have a really solid system there. So our, our accessory line has, has really grown. Um, we have our, uh, we kind of started out with our table lift was our big one. We have an electric one and a manual version of those. Make your table going up and down real easy when you convert it to a bed. Um, and then we've branched off into, we have lights for rattle reels. We have light bars for the outside. We have um, various accessories for your appliances and, and all sorts of things. We've really got a, quite a line of products now. To learn more about the custom products at Castle Winch or to inquire about your own custom order, visit castlewinch.com. Easy to get a hold of. You want to pick our brain on, on something ice house related that we don't even sell, um, we, we can help you with that too. Hi, I'm Peter Helliger, City Planner for the City of Andover. Are you an Andover resident who's interested in guiding the city's development and has an interest in serving your community? The Andover Planning and Zoning Commission may be right for you. The Planning and Zoning Commission conducts public hearings, makes recommendations to the City Council regarding land use applications, subdivisions, zoning regulations, and other matters that may come before the Council. The resident volunteers who are serving on the Planning Commission are invaluable in providing citizen participation, asking the tough questions to help the city vet complex land use issues. If you'd like to learn more about the Planning and Zoning Commission, you can watch live meetings or stream past commission meetings by clicking on the Watch Broadcast Meetings link on the City of Andover website. Meetings are typically held on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month in the council chambers at Andover City Hall. If you're interested in serving on the Planning Commission, or on any of our other advisory commissions, please fill out an advisory commission application form which is available on the City of Andover's website. Welcome back to Andover's edition of Live and Local on QCTV. And uh, I am joined with Eric Sutherland, the director or the, uh, the Re uh, recreational facilities director uh, at the Andover uh, community center and first of all Eric uh, what a great facility what a great job you've done uh, I know that we have a lot of day-to-day -day things and we'll talk a little bit about that as we go um, and you know with the the walking tracks the 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 relationship you have with the Y with right. the you know just the ice arena and and the two sheets of ice uh, but you, you also do a lot of special projects and things that, that get put on your plate outstanding like last year when uh, we had the Hall of Fame game between the uh, University of Minnesota and the St. Uh, Cloud uh, uh, State Huskies. University Huskies, yeah. the girls game came in, Division One game, it's on QCTV, but it's also on the Big Ten Network. Right. Uh, our, our, our feed was put on the Big Ten Network. Cool. What goes into the, the, uh, the uh, uh, work for that? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it was certainly a, a great opportunity to sort of showcase Andover in the, in the hockey programs here in town. Uh, we were approached by Doug Johnson, the executive director of the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame, uh, over the summer. And after some conversations, uh, we were certainly, you know, really honored to, to uh, be chosen to host that game. Um, so behind the scenes, we had a lot of volunteers that worked with the youth association, both the high schools. Obviously, it took all of our staff as a whole to, to pull that off. Uh, figuring out how to sell tickets, how to work with the NCAA and some of the regulations and who needed access to what. Um, so we had several meetings uh, behind the scenes and, uh, and then we're able to sort of showcase it that night, excited to get the teams we did. I, I think anytime you can get the Gophers, that's obviously pretty special for sure. 
um, in, in St. Cloud, you know, just up the road. So it turned out to be a great game, a little bit of an upset, I think, where the St. Cloud came in and beat the Gophers. Uh, but it was really a great night. Uh, they just recently actually hosted the game again over at Maple Grove Community Center just a couple weeks ago. And, and I, we, we must have done some things pretty well because I, I had some conversations with the Hockey Hall of Fame group again. They were looking for uh, just uh, some help in getting the Maple Grove group uh, organized and, uh, and and what have you. So it was certainly a ton of fun. Uh, yeah, and and you really you really showed off Andover, and, and thanks yeah. to you and your staff yeah. with that. Yeah. Speaking of your staff, um, uh, you know uh, a lot of things going on over there. I know that your staff is uh, really your 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 uh, real important to you. Yeah. Tell us a little yeah. bit about um, uh, your uh, uh, what's going on with your staff and what's yeah. going on over there. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we are really really fortunate to have a great group uh, at the community center. With the expansion that happened a couple years ago, the, the city council allowed us to bring in a couple more full-time staff, and we obviously had to bring in a, a number of additional part-time staff. Uh, it's really an operation that starts this time of year at six o'clock in the morning. We're in early with the walking track. Uh, we've, we've really developed our daytime programs. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but things throughout the day. High school teams are in at three o'clock for practice, and then we're right into youth hockey, high school games volleyball, the local Andover Basketball Association. So we're usually locking up around 11 p.m. <laughs> at night. Um, so it's a, it's a 15, 16 hour operation this time of year. And, and like I said, a, a big thanks to everybody there, uh, everybody in the front office um, and, and everybody, the operations guys, you know, we're really fortunate. Yeah, and, and it, it's it, it is it's a well-run operation, yeah, and, yeah. and I think that anybody goes over there, yeah. um, you know, the, the appreciation to you and and to everyone is yeah. is, yeah. is great. Yeah. Uh, you've got some events coming up. It's it really this is the, you know once school starts and and and, and the leaves fall, right. things p kind of pick up for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on, some of the upcoming events. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, right now just on a daily basis, we're running open pickleball sessions, open basketball, volleyball. Like I mentioned, uh, it's hockey season, obviously. We've got uh, the volleyball club, the basketball programs. Um, so there's just a ton of information on our website. Schedules are posted there for all of the different activities. Um, but then in addition to that, we do have a few special events coming up. Um, uh, Carousel Craft Shows which has been with us for 10 plus years. They do a, a large holiday show. So that's coming up on December 2nd and 3rd. It's a two day show. Um, uh, I, I think there maybe is a $1 admission or you can do a donation to the food shelf. So that'll be in our field house. 100 plus vendors come in for that big craft show. Uh, a lot of fun with that. Um, I think we've spoken a little bit here tonight about the holiday uh, lighting, the tree lighting. So uh, we're excited to have that on the uh, community center grounds there on that west, uh, west side. So that's coming up on December the 8th. Um, a new event that, we're, that I'm personally a little bit excited about is we're going to host a, uh, a card, sports card, and collectible show. Um, so the sports card market is is just really gotten huge over the last yeah. several years, kind of through COVID. It got to be a hobby that a lot of people got into. So uh, I, last count, I think they were sitting at about 50 vendors, 50 tables sold. So that's going to be on court four uh, in the in the field house, and that's on Saturday, uh, December the 16th, from nine to four. Free admission. Come in. There'll be vendors and uh, a few other special surprises uh, with that. Um, looking out a little bit farther, uh, the North Suburban Home Show, which we've had for several years at the community center. Uh, that event is on Saturday, the 9th of March. Um, so um, city staff and, and then the other communities uh, in the North Metro here put that on and it's always a great event for us to have that home show. Um, and then the last thing I wanna mention is just our boys and high school, our boys and girls high school hockey uh, teams. Their season just started here over the last week. Um, both are uh, highly ra uh, ranked again this year and certainly have aspirations to, to get back to the state tournament. Um, one thing uh, that we've changed this year is all high school hockey games uh, tickets are now online. So we don't, we don't offer uh, like cash ticket sales uh, the day of the game. Uh, everything's online. You can go to the community center website find the link to purchase your high school hockey tickets. I think they've done this at several of the local schools, the football games. So 
just something that we've changed up this year as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so basically, it's it's the same thing as if you're buying a basketball ticket, or uh, yeah, it's basically the same. Same sign, exact would, website. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So that, yeah. that that's great yeah. to know, especially yeah. for yeah. for those that uh, maybe aren't at uh, at the high school and just still love to come watch right. watch <laughs> high school sports as well. A um, couple of improvements that uh, have happened over at, uh, especially I think the rink. I think yeah. we we were talking uh, a while ago, and we talked about how the lighting in the new rink is yeah. is just outstanding with. Yeah. The, with the LEDs, uh, you've got some new lighting in the original. We do. Um, we always thought our lighting in the original rink was pretty good until <laughs> the new rink uh, went in. And um, we were fortunate to have Andover Youth Hockey make a large uh, donation uh, to the city for us to be able to go in and retrofit the old rink with all new LED lighting. And it's really just changed the look of that space. It's, it's just so bright and a, and a really nice white light. It's, it's very comparable, we, we've been told, to what you would see more at like a college or professional facility. Um, so we get a lot of compliments on that, and we certainly want to thank the Youth Hockey Association for that donation. So Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, it, the, the, the synergy that you have uh, with the facilities and, and the youth programs is, yeah. is, uh, is it's just, it's yeah. just great. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, just a couple things. Um, we um, are super excited. We've got our TOT time program back, so that's Monday and Thursday mornings. Um, it's $5 admission. Again, those schedules are all online for tot time. Um, the walking track, super popular, especially this time of year uh, as the temps start to drop a little bit. So that opens at 6.30 every morning. Uh, free admission for all Andover residents. Uh, we have a small fee for non-residents that want to come in. Um, um, you know, I guess another thing would be uh, advertising. Um, we feel like we've got such a beautiful facility um, a lot of people in and out, so we currently have some advertising opportunities. Um, if people are interested in getting their business name up on the hockey boards or in the gymnasium, um, we've got some options there so people can, can look us up and if they have any questions about that as well. Okay, so that, and that goes through the website or does that go through the contact you? How yeah, they could, they could just simply reach out uh, to the community center through sort of our general uh, email box or just call our front desk. Uh, Cindy Ramsier who works with us here at, at the community center. She manages all of our advertising. So, okay. yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eric, thank you and your staff yeah. for creating a really a first yeah. class facility over yeah. there. And we really appreciate yeah. you being part of Great. Live and Local today. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you too. got it. So coming up next, uh, we talked about the, uh, the Andover Community Center and the hockey teams for high school. Uh, both are off to a good start so far this year. And uh, we've got actually a game tomorrow night on QCTV, uh, the boys will take on Armstrong Cooper. Uh, let's take a look and preview their seasons. I enjoy having a tough schedule throughout the year. I don't, I mean, yeah, easy games are fun when you get 12 goals in a game, but I think it like it helps build a team and it helps build chemistry early in the year. I don't know, it helps us work hard and it helps us just like get disciplined before the end of the year, which it actually like, when games start to count. You kind of mentally get prepared for like the tough like battles you're gonna have and you're not like destroying teams all the time and you have to fight through adversity that you're not always gonna be handed everything. Yeah, I agree, I think it definitely tests kind of your commitment and how you have to dig deep. We emphasize working our hardest here and that kind of shows those third periods where it's both games, you kind of have to just dig deep and keep going. So I think the tougher schedules definitely help us come closer together as a team and overcome some bigger battles sooner than later. Yes, I would definitely say it's a hockey town. Maybe not so much uh, when I was younger, but uh, we built a really good culture here, and we see lots of kids out at the games, and they wanna they wanna be just like the older guys, like I did when I was that age. We have uh, Minnetonka ended our season last year, and uh, we got them next week, which is a big game. You know, that's one that we circled. You know. They ended our season, we gotta give, give it back to them, and then it's always uh, Maple Grove in the conference. Always have two, sometimes three good games with them a year. You know, we saw them at State a few years ago, and it's been, I think that's definitely been our rivalry for the last four or five years. I would say, well, definitely Minnetonka, and then I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing Hillmer this year. I think yeah. that'll be a fun one. 
I'm personally excited to play Edina. Um, I think it's always a grind against them, and they're always they always get a little like scrappy and like they always have like a different play than Tonka and Hill and all the other teams. So it's just like a fun environment to play around, and they have a big student section and everything too. So it's a fun environment. I'm excited to play Orno and Holy Family. We haven't played mm. those single A teams yet, at yeah. least when I've been here. So. Both really good single A teams had some success last year, so that should be fun, I think. Yeah. So we have a few rituals. Uh, one thing we've always done is we have a husky in the middle of our locker room, big husky head, and we make sure nobody steps on that or you got to kiss it. And uh, we do the same warm-ups. We take a lap out around the ring, go play some sewer ball, same warm-up every game. Like, we play this game called four versus D. Every game day, it gets so competitive. We try to play Stewie um, sometimes, yeah. but we're not too good at soccer, so it's kind of yeah. more of a kick the ball around. Personally, me and Kaylin, um, we have a Krabby Patty before each game. Just like the little like candy gummy burgers before each like period and everything. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like a ritual since I became a freshman and she was a sophomore and she just kind of brought me in. Like, what we like strive to like be looked at is just like disciplined and like hard workers. Like that's what like our team like is built on is just like completely like, hard work and discipline and just like being classy and just being a good role model to the little kids too. Yeah, I was just going to say too, like not only there's hard working on the ice, but it's also the type of person you are off the ice that we want to be known for here. I feel like Andover Hockey, we've always done it the right way, you know, we're respectful, you know, we appreciate everybody we're playing against and the referees, and I feel like we just, we have a big motto here is like everything, what you do affects everybody in the high school and it's not just one person, it's the whole team, you know, when something goes wrong, so we like to keep it professional and respectful. What can you say but roll skis? Let's go Huskies. Hey, thanks again for joining us today on uh, Andover's uh, edition of Live and Local. This is uh, QC uh, on QC TV. Uh, we had a chance to listen to uh, our talk with uh, city officials in, in, uh, uh, for Andover and a couple of events that are coming up that are important. Uh, the first and second, uh, we have got uh, over at the uh, Andover Community Center, um, we have got the Craft Carousel, uh, or Carousel Craft Show that uh, is on the uh, second and third. On the eighth, everybody should in Andover should plan to be on the west side of the uh, Andover Community Center as we get into the tree lighting as we head into the holidays. And of course, on the 15th and 16th at the Andover Community Center will also be uh, the baseball or the uh, sports card trading show coming up. Had a chance to talk about uh, recycling coming up for uh, the holidays, including wrapping paper and trees and wreaths. And uh, of course, the snow plowing and um, fingers crossed that snow plowing isn't too bad this year. We want a little snow, but uh, the, uh, the snow doesn't pile up too high. Uh, but again, uh, making sure that we've, we're parking the right spot. We've got our trash cans uh, up. And then finally, a uh, great uh, service organization in Granny's Closet. Uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh, honestly, 100% volunteer um, and a outstanding organization, service organization that you can be part of here in Anoka County. And finally, for everybody for QCTV, uh, we want to wish you a very happy holidays and just stay tuned or stay tuned as our winter sports uh, schedule has just started. We've had a couple of hockey games. We've got basketball. Uh, hockey or uh, basketball, hockey, wrestling, all coming up uh, through the winter uh, sports. And once again, what a great job by this crew. Uh, shout out to Seamus, Ryan, uh, and Leslie, who all did a great job with the creating of the show. And we appreciate you being part of it. Once again, happy holidays. And thanks again for joining us here on QCTV's Live and Local.